Let us sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The Lord is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. And with your spirit. Our intentions this morning are for the needs of Holy Mother Church and the suffering world, for Leo Clifford Diaz on his birthday, for all those recommended to our prayers, for our deceased parents, relatives, friends, and benefactors, for the souls in purgatory, for the conversion of sinners, and for the reign of God's kingdom on earth. And so we come together as God's family, conscious of our need for God's mercy and compassion. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come with word and sacrament, with salvation for your people. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd, leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, by whose grace, though sinners, we are made just, and though pitiable, made blessed, stand, we pray, by your works, stand by your gifts, that those justified by faith may not lack the courage of perseverance, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, after there had been much debate, Peter rose and said to the apostles and the elders, Brethren, you know that in the early days God made choice among you, that by my mouth the Gentiles should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God, who knows the heart, bore witness to them, giving them the Holy Spirit just as he did to us. And he made no distinction between us and them, but cleansed their hearts by faith. Now therefore, why do you make trial of God by putting a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we have been able to bear? But we believe that we shall be saved through the grace of the Lord Jesus, just as they will. And all the assembly kept silence, and they listened to Barnabas and Paul, as they related what signs and wonders God had done through them among the Gentiles. After they finished speaking, James replied, Brethren, listen to me. Simeon has related how God first visited the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. And with this, the words of the prophets agree, as it is written, after this I will return, and I will rebuild the dwelling of David, which has fallen. I will rebuild its ruins, and I will set it up, that the rest of men may seek the Lord, and all the Gentiles who are called by my name, says the Lord, who has made these things known from of old. Therefore my judgment is that we should not trouble those of the Gentiles who turn to God, but should write to them to abstain from the pollutions of idols, and from unchastity, and from what is strangled, and from blood. For from early generations Moses had had in every city those who preach him, for he is read every Sabbath in the synagogues. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Tell among all the peoples the wonders of the Lord. Tell among all the peoples the wonders of the Lord. Oh, sing a new song to the Lord. 
Sing to the Lord, all the earth. O oh, sing to the Lord, bless his name. Tell among all the peoples the splendors of the Lord. Proclaim his salvation day by day. Tell among the nations his glory and his wonders among all the peoples. Tell among the nations the wonders of the Lord. Say to the nations, the Lord is king. The world he made firm in his place. He will judge the peoples in fairness. Tell among the peoples the wonders of the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord, and I know them, and they follow me. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Thank Glory you. to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And so our first reading today is the conclusion of the first council of the church, the Council of Jerusalem. And as no doubt Father Sean uh, said yesterday or uh, uh, explained yesterday, the heart of the First Council of Jerusalem is this uh, tension between uh, Jewish Christians and uh, non-Jewish Christians, the tension between those who see Christianity as just a, a, a different or a, a, a reformed version of Judaism or see it as something completely new that God is doing. Uh, rather like saying um, uh, there are those who see uh, Christianity is like the Alpha group as part of a parish. Oh, they're just, they're Christians, but they're just, you know, just a slight different version. Um, they're doing something slightly different, but we're all together. And they want to say that people have to become Jewish first in order to be Christian. Um, it's just, just a branch of Judaism. And what is, uh, the, is coming through very clearly is that God is doing something new in Christ. You don't have to become Jewish first. So what they decide is um, that they should do, and they don't make it clear here, obviously, but we know from history what they're doing is they're asking people who become Christian who were not Jewish to do the barest minimum, what a stranger living in Jerusalem would be required to do, just as not to give scandal to the Jews who live around them. So it's really not asking anything more of them. They don't have to become Jewish first. They're just asking them just to live in such a way that doesn't upset Jewish people. That's what they're asking of them. And then our gospel, uh, we see Jesus... Um, talking about his commandments. Now, we have to be very careful not to see uh, the commandments of Christ as being like the Ten Commandments of the Old Testament. Um, all the way through Matthew's Gospel, when Jesus speaks in uh, chapter 5 and chapter 6, you can see that he's saying he's not interested in the letter of the law. He wants us to go beyond the law, something more than just the law itself. You have heard how it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I tell you, love your enemies and do good to those who hate you. You have heard it said this, but I say to you. So he notches everything up. And what he's actually doing is speaking the language of love. When you love somebody, you don't say, how little can I get away with that they think I love them? You say, how much can I do to show my love for them? It's always this notching up all the way through. 
And the danger always of rules is human beings are very much like school children. You give them a rule, thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. They say, oh, I'm great. I haven't done any of these things. I'm fine. And Jesus says, that's not enough. Love doesn't work like that. I haven't done anything wrong, so I'm okay. It's a case of what have we done that is loving? What have we done that is good? It's moving always uh, into the language of love. One thing we don't pick up because of the way our translations work, and it's exactly the same in uh, the other languages that I know well, particularly uh, in Zulu um, and in Afrikaans, but in, in Zulu you uh, don't pick this up either. The word that is used here, if you abide in me and I abide in you, is a word that is used 22 times all the way through John's Gospel but it's translated differently. And we don't pick up that it's the same word. It's like a little refrain, like a chorus that's supposed to catch our attention. The word became flesh and made his abode among us, tented among us. Then in, John, uh, in the meeting of Andrew and the other disciple with Jesus, Jesus turns to them and says, what do you want? And they say, Master, where do you abide? And he says to them, well, come and see. And it says, they abided with him the rest of that day. Now we say, they remained. We say, uh, where do you stay, Master? But that's not what the word is. The word is this abide, meno in Greek. It's the same word all the way through. And then Jesus uses exactly that same word to say that he must abide in our hearts and we have to abide in him. So it's a specific theology that John is trying to get across that Jesus is looking at, that we have to make our home within him because he is making our home within us. This real sort of, how does he live inside us because we're living inside him and, you know, it doesn't make sense. It's not meant to make sense. And this you see all the way through uh, Paul's letters in different language. We are in Christ, en Christo. We need to be completely rooted in Christ. And it's only when we're completely rooted in Christ and Christ has made his dwelling place. And you Carmelites know all about that, the interior castle, when he makes his dwelling place in our hearts. We become the abode of God. Only then are we filled sufficiently with his love to be able to live that love out and then make that commandment present in the world. We can live out the love that is already present in our hearts. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. 
pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, whom by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him, the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising, the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Stephen our Bishop, Sylvester his assistant, and all who serve your faithful people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Glory. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you, you take, take away, away the sins of the, of the world. world. Have, Have mercy, mercy on us. Yeah. Lamb of God, you, you take, take away the sins of the world. world. Have yeah. mercy on us. Yeah. Lamb of God, you take, take away the sins of the world. Yeah. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Christ died for all, so that those who live may live no longer for themselves, 
but for him who died for them and is risen. Alleluia. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, glorifying the Lord by your lives. We are protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell, Satan, and all the evil spirits who wander to the world for the good of souls. Amen. 